Hi everyone, welcome to the do-it-yourself telecom channel and in this video I want to talk about Cisco routers uh, because there are many of you in the audience who are looking to get into the IT networking and telecom field so let's touch on Cisco because it is something you're going to run into a lot. Cisco is kind of the industry standard when it comes to uh, data center connectivity and uh, Cisco routers usually come in basically two form factor categories, meaning that they're either desktop sets, which mean that they, you know, they need to sit on top of something because they don't have any network brackets. Um, then there's the standard network size, which is 19 inches across, and they usually come with the little metal brackets that let them fit neatly into the network uh, cabinets. You know, those, those either the two columns or sometimes the four column network cabinets. And Cisco routers uh, are going to have uh, a bunch of these little RJ45 and sometimes some RJ11 sized ports on them, but they do different things and it's important to know the difference because you're going to kind of look like you don't know what you're doing if you get these mixed up when you're, when you're working on an assignment. So let's talk about the first one that almost all Cisco routers have and that is a console port. Console ports are usually identified by this baby blue label that says console. And so there's one, there's one, um, this guy's got one. Um, they almost all have them. And uh, in the newer style, we're starting to see now where they're, they're also having a little bitty, uh, what are they called, mini or micro USB ports for console. I'm not going to get into that right now, but you will sometimes see them side by side like that. Um, the other thing that almost all Cisco routers have is an Ethernet port. Okay, so Ethernet port is just another word for network port. So it, it's from the Ethernet port is usually going to lead to like a network switch, which then goes to all the PCs. And then, but not always, there's going to be uh, wide area network ports. Now, let's don't get confused here. So this is where I find you know a lot of newbies make mistakes. Is they you know, they take an RJ45 eight pin connector and they say ah fits here must be a network port. No, it's console port. It doesn't. It's not a network port. It doesn't work the same way. Oh well, look over here RJ45. Well, this is a wide area network, 56K card. It, was, it won't work on a network. So the bottom line is here is that just because this cable fits does not make it a network port. All right. Usually the convention that Cisco uses is, is your network ports are usually labeled in yellow. So like that's an Ethernet port. That's a, these are network ports. Um, the, the dark blue usually indicates some kind of a wide area network connection. Like on this desktop model, this one's got a, a T1 card in it right here. So see it's got the dark blue. All right. So at a minimum, all routers have at least an Ethernet, usually at least two Ethernet ports or, or maybe one Ethernet port and a wide area network port. Um, and so the important is to know the difference between a network port and a wide area network port. So if the technician you work with says, well, you know, we need to unplug the, the wide area network connector or the 56k connector or the t1 connector that's going to be these these dark blue labeled ports now not quite so frequently but you sometimes will run into these little um these smaller ports these are rj11s so in other words these are the not the wide eight pin cord but the the little four or six pin pin cords and those are usually for some kind of uh dial tone they're usually supplying uh dial tone so if you see these these are usually usually phone ports all right so a couple things you should know is that if you're asked to connect a Cisco console cable, it's usually one of these blue uh, serial cables. You can get these on eBay for about, I don't know, 10 or $15. And it always goes in the console port. And I've got a video where I talk about this. So rather than just explain the whole thing right now, I'll just leave you a link so you can go see about connecting a Cisco console cable to... to um, to a router, it's it's used quite frequently to diagnose uh, diagnose problems or to set up um, a router from scratch. And so then again, um, your Ethernet cables, you know, going to connect to either you know a switch or maybe even um, maybe another router um, or sometimes a firewall. And then they also connect uh, to computers. And then your wide area network connections, which are going to be like your T1s, your 56k. You might see ATM um, or other some other specialized type of uh, service. That's your connection to the outside world. All right, so those are the basic elements of a Cisco router. Uh, those little cards I was just showing you a second ago, you don't want to change those out while the unit's on. 
Um, sometimes you can, but generally that you don't want to be doing that unless you were told specifically to go ahead and, and swap that card out um, with the power on. So that's known as hot swapping. And sometimes it's allowed, but I, to be on the safe side, I wouldn't swap out any cards while the unit's on. All right, so I hope that helps you understand a little bit about a Cisco router. And if you do want to learn more about a Cisco console cable connection to a PC, or if you even want to see some uh, basic Cisco commands once you're in the console, I've got a link in here that takes you to a video on another channel I have that, that talks about that. Okay, thanks for watching.